so um according to fabric's own instagram account it looks like they have now decided to adopt a no photos no videos policy at their clubs and don't get me wrong it's somewhat commendable right i guess this whole um no photo no video thing is something that they've kind of gleaned or taken from maybe the berlin scene uh, maybe this is mostly coming from the whole New York thing as well. You know, the idea that you kind of, especially in the, what was it, Studio 54 time, right? You're not going to take real lot of pictures and stuff in there. But again, that was maybe a whole different era. So there wasn't very, the accessibility to maybe take pictures in there for the most part. But this idea that you can somehow help to cultivate the atmosphere and the vibe of a club by preventing people from kind of being disconnected from it by being obsessed with what's on their phone or whatnot is a good idea it's commendable like i said being a place like Birmingham, you start to realize how important and how valuable it is to have that um sense of somewhat anonymity and carefreeness and just the idea that you can go in there you can see a very popular celebrity somebody you might have seen in a movie and no one's really bothering them everyone's just enjoying themselves doing what they're doing because they're not glued to their phone or whatnot cool but one of the things that really um, helps is that overall, it's not just the idea that you ban people from taking pictures or videos. It's more so the overall vibe, the programming, the security that you employ, the people that work at the bar. Everything kind of plays into your overall vibe of a club. And usually what I found is less so about what the club looks like, less so about how expensive the drinks are. Um, that kind of play into the vibe of the place right mostly from what I know again from promoting loads of parties and DJing loads of places from the really crappiest of places to somehow some of the best clubs here in London what really differentiates between the the best and the worst places mostly has to do with security and most has to do with the club that they uh, sorry and the crowd that they basically attract and usually for the most part um, clubs generally especially when they first start out you can somehow have a control and who kind of comes to the club vis-a-vis -vis who you kind of allow to do nights there what sort of stuff do you kind of promote on your social media all that kind of stuff can kind of go a long way to kind of helping to somehow um dictate who kind of this who kind of is attracted to the place right you can somehow do a bit of social engineering to make that happen for the most part i know you know for instance like you know places like um Places like but like clubs like that Body Hammer, for instance, in London have a very different crowd to some of the other um, nights that uh, yeah, for instance, Body Hammer they do them in different clubs around London. I'm fairly sure if the Body Hammer goes on at Oval Space, there's going to be a very different crowd that attends a Body Hammer event at Oval Space than it would be any other event they'll put on there, right? It's mostly the promoters are basically kind of in charge or maybe get the responsibility of making sure they cultivate the club space and the attendees how they need it to be. But the clubs themselves don't really have that, you know, luxury. For instance, Egg is a good example. No matter what kind of programming they put into place, there's always going to be a certain type of person that's going to want to go to egg and you it's up to you whether you decide if that's for you or not for you but usually it doesn't have anything to do with the whole banning of the photos and the video so for fabric one of the main issues i have with that place all, all the time is that as a really you know um as a person that enjoys going out a lot every weekend it's not the best place to go to if you just want to kind of let your hair down and get completely leery because for the most part they completely kill your vibe view the really aggressive and overzealous security guards at the start of your night right around right the front of the door they kind of kind of vibe you out i remember when i used to go to at the time there will sometimes be sniffer dogs and there'd be that gate thing you have to go through it just really feels it feels really intimidating it feels somehow ridiculous and it kind of takes you out of the zone takes you out of the element it takes you away from kind of this idea of being liberated and being able to dance and have a free time on the dance floor and have a kind of a bit of a freaky time on the dance floor it's a bit bizarre in that way and then of course um the programming or the program or the crowd itself that's attracted to fabric is so so um it's so weird right it's, there's such a maybe because of the prevalence of people who play there right they cover such a wide remit in terms of dance music that it's fairly impossible to kind of dictate who comes and to kind of keep a certain vibe but it's just it's just too much do you know what I mean the people that go there's just too much in general and again unless you want to see a particular DJ it's a good thing about it because of how it's spaced out you can just go and see someone play like a gig and just stand in your corner and just kind of not really engage with the rave itself but again that's not really what rave is about right you kind of want to be able to kind of rub shoulders with people getting in amongst it and all that stuff so if you're not doing that what's the point of being there and I feel like as great as this is that they kind of want to ban people from taking pictures and videos on the dance 
Amazon store, they really need to kind of fix up the security and they also need to fix up or figure out a way to improve the crowd that goes there or make sure that they're well behaved because I don't know, again, I'm a fairly, um, I'm a fairly, uh, you know, I can look after myself and stuff, and whatnot, but I'd imagine other people from other um, walks of life or from other communities will probably not feel the most comfortable going to a fabric night out, especially with all the other places that you can go to in London. It probably doesn't seem like the place that you would go to if you really want to be as um, free as you want to be. It would all, you know, you know what I'm talking about in that sense. So it can, you know, it's getting admirable, but I don't really, I think they're kind of avoiding what's really at heart of the main issue with fabric and what people have such a weird time when they go out there in general but anyway the caption itself says the following fabric is london's home of underground music always aiming to create a feeling of self-expression on the dance floor as we approach reopening we are introducing a strict no photo and no video policy at the club stay in the moment and put away your phone enjoy the night so interesting to see what they do i know fold ended up doing that for a little bit not so much so i think they kind of stopped kind of enforcing it but fold in london our first sort of build as our first 24-hour party venue but it you know the 24-hour party thing didn't really last too long as per usual because london people or the london gov or the uk government for the most part hate people having fun and i guess they got involved in their fair share of controversies that maybe you know kind of led to their not being able to have as many 24-hour parties or whatnot i don't know what happened but something happened in that regard but still they had this um no photos no policy thing but what kind of let them down all the times i went the stickers they used were fairly crappy that they put over your cameras and they would usually always fall off and then people would just end up using their phone anyway so i'm interested to see what fabric do will they put them you know because bergen have those bulletproof stickers that don't ever fall off they don't ever kind of you know even no matter how sweaty you get where you put your phone they they just stay on there in it um so we just see if they have stickers they put off your phone whether you put your phone in the pouch thing that they do in those comedy shows i mean dave Chappelle was doing it for a bit that'll be curious to see what they do or if it's just like something that they kind of saying out loud and then hoping people kind of just abide by the rules and i guess if you maybe enforce it a bit on the dance floor it can help again that's the whole thing as well they have such when i'm if i'm not mistaken x or y and fabric are the same where they have security guards who just sometimes they do kind of um shifts where they'll just peruse and kind of walk straight through the dance floor and that's such a vibe killer i feel like when you see this kind of really stocky guy coming through the dance floor with a fluorescent jacket on with his little flashlight making sure everyone no one's doing anything untowards and oh, it's just like i don't know i don't know maybe it's just me um and maybe they have changed how the security go on there but again the security and the crowd they're just too weird to make that place legit and if it does help in general fair enough but i don't really see it helping going forward i don't really see it helping going forward